the most visible part of an operating system is the file system right so so what you don't see anything inside so once you open a shell or when you open your desktop what you see is files directories and files so file system is very very important and uh, files actually is the basic a file is the basic unit of storage when i even want to say one byte say one character say comma quote i want to just save k i need to create a file and save that k so file system is very very important and from a security point of view the leakage of information happens through leakage of files so there are a lot of things about file security of files which uh, in the subsequent modules we will cover right but we'll just give you the basics of how file systems are implemented so that there is a completion in which what you are trying to learn here so the next two modules i'll give you some basic implementation details of file systems specifically from a unix point of view not necessarily unix but uh, more on unix right so what is a file file is a logical storage unit it's just a collection of related information these are all test book definitions okay now the file system is actually basically organized into layers so there is again a layer like how we had a memory hierarchy where we had disk and then we have memory then we had cache register like that the file system itself we could have a multiple set of layers we'll get to know about these layers the entire file system actually resides on the secondary storage and when the system boots up some part of the thing comes on to the main memory right some part of the file system information comes on to the main memory and when you close down the system shut down the system this is returned back if you don't shut down the system many part of your file system can be there in your main memory and you can continue to have it that's why if you suddenly switch off your system then we want to reboot then it may say file system corrupted should i fix what it means this is what it means so when a system is booted up from the disk some part of the file system is basically moved into the main memory and then when the system is shut down it is going back into the disk so that's why you need to properly shut down your system so that next time when you boot then there is no problem with your file system why do i move it to the main memory as i told you main memory is much faster than the uh, secondary memory so to enhance the speed of your operation of your file system some part of your uh, disk uh, hard disk some part of the file system some crucial parts which we will discuss some as we proceed is brought into the main memory now there is something called a file control block which basically have information about the file and for every file we will have a file control block uh, and then there is there is also one very important thing the device driver which has to work along with the file system the device driver is what the disk driver is right so your usb or whatever uh, for every every storage device there is a driver and that driver has to basically take care of the movement of data from the cpu ram to the disk and disk back to the ram okay so these are all uh, very very uh, important aspects of the file system right now we said that the file system is layered what is this layering about so so i have an application program which wants to access a file so it it basically sees a logical file system logical file system is that i see hello world dot c i don't really care whether that hello world is stored on a usb disk or that hello world is stored on a on a cd or hello world is stored on an old tape or floppy or whatever i don't really care so as an application program i see a file as a name right hello world dot c sitting in some directory so right so that's what my view as an application program is a logical file system i am not bothered about how physically that file is stored in which media and which form now somebody has to hide that physical storage uh, from me and who does it the file system part of the operating system does it right so i see a logical file system what does the logical file system see it does see some file organization module what is file organization a file is organized like a tree right uh, so you have a root file system inside that root uh, root directory inside that root there are several directories inside that several directories so it's an hierarchy of directories and in each directory i could have other sub directories plus files so that is how uh, so directory itself is a file which will give you the list of files that are stored here so that's a file organization the file organization module sees a basic file system 
and then uh, the basic file system basically sees an IO control which has to read and write so and that the IO control basically sees the devices right so so that is a complete abstraction at the highest layer of an application program just seeing a file as a name or a directory slash name then there is a file logical file system looking at uh, it sees a file organization module file organization module sees a basic file system the basic file system sees an IO control IO control basically sees the devices so this is the layered file system why we need a layered file system then only application programs can be easily written so application program need not have knowledge about the basic implementation and this is also important the other important thing is that um, there could be the operating system could have much more control on the access of the files right so giving this abstraction the operating system can give permissions for say user can use only this part of the file system right so user b can use some other part user a and user b cannot have intersection in what they can use or they can have intersection wherever they have an intersection it will be only a read only file system the user can only read from this user cannot write into this part of your file system so all these type of access permissions can come up we are going to talk about that in the later modules but that is very very important the layered file system has lot of implications on security so a file system essentially has one thing called a boot control block so so when we boot a system it says so I am looking into a bootable device what do you mean by a bootable device this is a disk in which the first entry or we call it as sector 0 or the first that should have a bootable program so that is called a boot control block then it has something called the volume control block then it has a file control block so boot control block basically enable booting through that uh, particular uh, disk the volume control block actually controls uh, so there could be multiple volumes and then each volume is controlled and within that volume control block we have a file control block which basically manages the entire directory structure so again there is a layer there within a basic file system itself what we call here the basic file system you see uh, three from the bottom there could be a hierarchy there uh, in, or there could be a partition there uh, of responsibilities the boot control block is responsible for booting the system volume control box to ma maintain the entire volume then file control block is for maintaining individual files so there is an hierarchy created there so all these hierarchies are important because this is where we basically uh, you know any breach into this can cause serious information security uh, issues now we will now look at the typical file control block the bottom most part of this so it has file permissions who can create the file who can uh, delete the file uh, who can write into the file etc file dates last modified for example I talked about in the previous module about uh, a disgruntled employee going and changing a boot time variable right so now we could actually have when was it last changed so that access time etc so file dates or access times is very very important and then uh, who is the owner of this file who to which group is belonging to what is the access control list for this owner etc then the size of the file it's also important then you should have pointers of so these are all information about the file so these are called attributes of the file say for example your person i am kamakoti i am my initial is v i am so and so my age is so much my gender is so, so so I have some attributes like so for like that the file also has some attributes after that the data of that file should be stored so it will also have pointers to where the data is basically stored right so so the typical file control block uh, in the Unix environment we call it as an I node or an identification node it has all these details about the files and it will also have pointers of where the data of those files are stored so as I mentioned there could be an in memory file system structures what is that in memory when I boot the system there should be something that is brought from the disk into the memory typically to enhance the speed and also maintain certain security inside also right so what is what will be there inside a memory for example when whenever we create a open a file for every file there is an entry created in a file table which the file table is an in memory file structure 
the file table will have details about all the files that are basically uh, opened at that point of time, which is currently being accessed by at least one of the process that is uh, executing in the system, right? So for every process, we have an in-memory file table. That's what we call as per process open file table. And then I could have one file table for the entire system, system wide. So these are all basically important things that are brought into the memory so that we could, uh, uh, we could handle this. So what will be there inside an entry in the open file table as we see here? So what could be there? So when I start accessing a file, please note that, say let us say a C program, I say uh, F scan F. So I read byte after byte. So one of the important, so I do F scan of now, I read some byte and I do some other processing and some later point I do again an F scan of, I read exactly the next byte after what I have read. So this open process file table will keep some information about uh, how many bytes are currently read. So that when, the, when I want to read the, the next uh, F scan of, it will actually get me the next byte from that. So it will keep information about how many bytes are currently read. It, I can also open a, per, uh, open a file with read write permission. So if you look at F open in your C uh, code, you can open it with read or write or read write permissions. Uh, that permission also will be put here. So when the file system uh, comes into existence, there are a lot of things that are brought into the main memory uh, for, uh, so that we can have quick access and also we can manage the operations on this. So that is what we mean uh, by in-memory file system structures. Now let us look at what we mean by a virtual file system. Uh, the virtual file system actually provides an object-oriented way of implementing file systems. So VFS allows the same system call or whatever API, the application programming program and interface to be used for different types of file systems. So that is very, very important. So today I use a USB, I use a CD, I use a uh, SD card, I use uh, flash, I use different varieties of disk. For everything, a C program, whether I am opening it on a SSD or I am opening anywhere, it only says F open, it only says F write, if only F scan of F print of F close. Right? That's a single interface. It is independent of where you store this file. So, so as far as that, one of the important uh, aspect of operating system is it should give you what I just explained earlier, a virtual file system where you see a file as a file, a directory as a directory. We do not really bother about how it is implementing and that is also very important. So this is a hierarchy here. I have a file system interface. I have a virtual file system interface and then there could be different types like I could have a disk, hard disk, I could have another variety of hard disk, it can be a USB or a SD card and then I could also have file system stored on some other server and this I can use using NFS or network file system, right. So, so, so the file system can reside on the network also for us. So if you look at typical large scale clusters, right, the disks are attached to the network and there is a disk driver or a file system implemented on the disk which basically uh, serves the remaining compute nodes through the network. So basically giving us a network file system. So if you want to understand more about network file system, just uh, go and uh, search for uh, NAS, Network Adapted Storage, uh, NAS and uh, you can basically get more details about how file systems can be implemented through the network. Now let us quickly look at directly implemented. What is a directory? Directory essentially consists of list of files that are stored plus pointers to the next direct other subdirectories. So I can implement a directory as a linear list. When I implement it as a linear list, what happens? When I want to open a file, what will the operating system do? It will go to the directory and scan one by one. So if there are say uh, 50 files or 100 files there, then I want to access the 100th file, I have to scan from the top and go to the 100th file and then uh, basically pick it up. So the time required to open a file becomes extremely, so these are very important interesting things about direct implementation. The next thing is hash table, uh, right? So, so what we can do is that given a name, you execute a function called a hash function and that will tell you an entry where it will be. So a very simple example of hash, hashing, 
So, so let us say that uh, I'll do some uh, h of the directory name, right? And so I have a table, say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This h will take a directory name as input and give an answer in the range 0 to 4. So let me say h of student 1. This is a this is a file that will go to uh, say 3. So student 1, let me call it S1 is stored here. Now h of student 2 will go to say 4, so S2 will be uh, stored here. So whenever I search for S2, I again re-execute this hash function and that will give me 4, so immediately I can go to 4 and get S2. Right? Similarly, if I want to search for S1, I execute this h on that directory name and that will give me 3, so if I go to 3, I will get that S1. So this is, uh, so in constant time, uh, I can go to this thing. But the, the path is, there could be this hash function might be such that there can be some h of uh, S10, that can also give me 3. So that is what we call it as uh, collision. So here S1, then I will have S10 also stored. So when I want to search for S10, I, I evaluate this hash function that gives me 3. I go to this 3, first I see S1, then I see S10. So it will take some time, it need not be necessarily constant time. So, so this is another very important thing. So some of these are very interesting because many of the virus you see, they actually create, uh, they go and sit, they can hide in the file system. Basically they get themselves, uh, you know, uh, implanted inside the file system and they adjust the permissions they can adjust the structure such that they are hidden. So lot of these type of uh, implementation details are exploited to gain stealth. The virus comes into your disk, it is the main important thing is stealth. It does not announce or it does not give any pointer by which you can quickly find out that it has infected the disk. And for doing all these things, understanding of uh, this uh, directory implementation is extremely crucial. That is why we are trying to cover this. These are all basic operating system uh, fundas, but we are trying to cover this here because, uh, you know, these will also have some implications on the way a virus can affect your disk. So that is why we just, uh, virus can come and stay in the disk and uh, with stealth, okay. So that is why we try and issue this. So now a directory could be implemented as a linear list, it could be implemented as a hash table. Uh, and in the case of hash table, there will be collisions and there are ways of resolving collisions. One thing is to have a, in a sub list for every entry as I have shown here, okay. So we will next go into the next module and uh, talk more about file system implementation there. Thank you.